Sections 154 through 156 at U.S. Cellular Field are affectionately known as the K-Zone. Tonight, we trade our broadcast booth high above home plate for a seat amongst Chris Sale's most adoring fans. It's the rubber match, Sox and Tigers. So grab your Sale t-shirt and K-Card and let's go. Some nights, the weather gods have great hearing. We asked for a tremendous night for baseball. We got it. The Sox and Tigers in the rubber match. And we join the folks in the Chris Sale K-Zone for this game three against Detroit. Good evening, everybody. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone along with you. He's already signed like 900 autographs. We're out here with the folks. And it is a beautiful night for it. And you've been making some great friends already. What an amazing coincidence. Here we are, Chris Sales pitching, and we happen to be in the K zone. Could you have believed that when we started this broadcast? How about it? Wow, amazing. And Chris Sale looking for lots of strikeouts to delight the fans right in front of us. You know, he had that perfect start. I mean, historically perfect start. Recently, he's not been the same type of guy. It's really been location more than anything else. He's thrown the ball as hard. The breaking ball breaks well, but at times, he just loses command of it. This is a change up to Mike Napoli. He hits it out of the park. Then Eric Hosmer comes up. He gets a rolling breaking ball. He hits it out of the park. Chris is literally beside himself. And he hits a fastball out of the park. Then Jose Iglesias drives one into left field. A frustrated Chris Sale, as you see, head to head with Mike Pelfrey tonight. This is a matchup that took place on June 4th in Detroit. Pelfrey threw the ball well. He got the win, his only win of the year. Chris Sale didn't throw it all that well, and he's got a losing record lifetime against the Tigers. So hopefully tonight he can have his best stuff and delight all of the people who've come out to see him. Well, he's going to have to because these offenses, both of them in this series, have been very rambunctious. Take a look at those numbers. You realize between the two teams, 38 runs, 57 hits. 16 doubles. Sox have out homered a very strong Tiger offense and walked well. The Tigers have seen more of them. So hopefully tonight it won't be quite as offensive. And if it is, it's going to be the guys wearing the white uniforms as opposed to the visitors. Sox and Tigers. Somebody's going to win a series and we'll watch it from where you are if you're in the K zone. It's coming up. the series finale between the White Sox and Tigers coming your way in just a bit. I'm Sierra Santos here in the K-Zone. The K-Zone, always the place to be when Chris Sale is on the mound. And I'm joined by Dylan Avalos, who Chris Sale is your favorite pitcher, but you've never gotten the chance to see him pitch. How excited are you tonight? I'm super excited. Probably going to be one of my favorite games after leaving here today. Hopefully going to get the W. Really looking forward to it. And I understand you got to meet Chris Sale. Tell me a little bit about that. 
Um, I was here this Monday, and he was walking by in the dugout, so I asked, stopped him, asked for the autograph. He gave it to me. Really nice. It was amazing. A good experience overall. Now, Dylan, I understand you are turning 13 years old in just four days as a birthday gift. How many strikes would you like to see Chris Dale get tonight? I'd like to see, like, 13 strikeouts. 13 strikeouts. You heard it right here. Dylan, thank you so much. The first pitch coming your way in just a bit. Chicago is brought to you in part by Toyota. Discover more in a Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com or your local Toyota dealer today. Let's go places. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Audi. Truth in engineering. And by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Brilliant sunshine in Chicago and a perfect day to be outside and watch the game. Steve Stone, Jason Benetti, our entire crew. If you look closely down that left field line, there you'll find us. And here is the man that will be 60 feet, 6 inches away from the Tigers from the Motor City. Chris Sale facing them for the second time this season. Starting lineup for those Tigers, who are now fourth best in Major League Baseball, hitting at a 271 clip. Ian Kinsler has been a big part of that. He was just one for six last night. Maven is back in the lineup in for Romine. Mike Avilas was injured last night. He's back as well. And Iglesias on the longest hit streak in Major League Baseball, 12 right now. Let's take a look at the defense and how they're going to line up behind Chris Sale. It's a different defense tonight. Melky Cabrera in left. J.B. Chuck takes over center field with Adam Eaton sliding back to right where he just could win a gold glove. Then it's Todd Frazier, Tim Anderson, Brett Laurie, Jose Abreu. Deanna Navarro gets a nod behind the plate. And our Lexus Pursuing Perfection starting pitcher is Chris Sale. Looking for number 11 is ERA 287. 73 hits and 91 innings, 86 strikeouts, only 19 walks. Let's take a look at the umpires for the game tonight. Paul Emmel, the crew chief behind the plate. Pat Holberg is at first. Mark Carlson at second. And Quinn Wolcott is at third. Well, Chris Sale, we mentioned, is in pursuit of that 11th victory. Rarified air in Major League Baseball. He's still the leader in the American League. Jordan Zimmerman was the April pitcher of the month. He and Sale were dueling for that. And Chris is maybe on his way to 11 tonight. We shall see. It's a great view. 
it's a terrific view if they hit very hard foul balls down the left field line. I used to sit here a little bit as a kid move around the ballpark. Did you have a ticket for the various seats you used? because if you didn't I'm going to retroactively give you the boot from well, the park. But sometimes we didn't sometimes oh, we just yeah. try and move down and we'd sneak it and put the thumb over the section you know how it goes. There's strike one tonight to Ian Kinsler from Chris Sale. Sox and Tigers in the rubber match last night 11 8 Detroit two nights ago 10 9 Sox. And the hope for both bullpens is that maybe just maybe get long outings out of both Sale and Pelfrey. Chris has heated up the fastball at 96 to start it off against Kinsler, who's not a walking leadoff hitter. He is a swinging leadoff hitter. Two balls and a strike to Kinsler, who's hitting 314 on the year. He's slugging 543, one of the top sluggers in the American League. And doing it from the leadoff spot. This is a very aggressive hitter, always has been. On a lot of teams, he could absolutely be hitting in the third spot. When you look at those power numbers, you just have to kind of blink your eyes because that's not leadoff hitter numbers. Third base, Todd Frazier for out number one. Todd got the day off yesterday to sit and watch. And back in the lineup tonight. It's a good straight change to Kinsler, who's really geared up always for the fastball, as most home run hitters are. So he threw a good one, put it in a good spot. This one was down out over the plate. Get the ground out. You mentioned in the open location has been the issue issue if there has been one for sale. What uh, what are you looking for tonight? What should fans look for as they watch sale and that location? I want to play close attention to the sliders because if they're breaking sharply, they just disappear. If they start to roll a bit or come up there gradually where a hitter can time them can see them all the way then he's going to have some problems with this predominant right hand hitting team who has a lot of power. So it's the arc of the slider tonight that you're looking at. You want to keep it as briefly in the same plane as you possibly can you want it to quickly pass through the plane with a lot of spin. It looks to me like Chris is intent on keeping the ball down. Maben looks back to Paul Emmel and questions the location. That location was a pretty good one. On to pitch track says strike. Kept the ball down that time. Abreu skids into position and Sale is on the spot for out number two. For a left hander who usually falls off to the third base side you have to redirect and get over there quickly. Maben has good speed. Chris Sale beats him by a full step and then avoids getting hit by him. So a guy who swung it really well last night is the big man who's at bat now. Miguel Cabrera with four hits in that game. A couple of doubles. A walk as well. Right field Adam Eaton into position for out number three. One two three inning for sale here comes Pelfrey.
familiar at the top, third straight game. Anderson and Eaton pair up in the first two positions. Navarro up to six behind Frazier, who was off last night. Avi Garcia DHs. J.B. Shuck is into center field. Let's take it to Cricket. Wireless defensive setup. And there it is. Avila's playing left back from that injury, and Maven and Martinez, along with Castellanos, Iglesias, Kinsler, and Cabrera. James McCann, a fine defensive catcher behind the plate, and Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Mike Pelfrey. One and six this year. The last five times out, he's been brilliant. Last time out, he got 16 ground ball outs. We'll see what is in store for him tonight. Tim Anderson takes a strike. Well, what you saw at the top of the first inning is rare for this series. There had been a combined eight one, two, three innings in a total of 21 innings of baseball in this set. Kinsler behind the bag. Anderson beat it out. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to see a guy who can really turn it on at the top of the Sox lineup. And the fact that he's homegrown is just icing on the cake. So this ball goes up the middle, and Kinsler gets to it quickly enough, plants the back foot, gets it across, and doesn't get it there in time as Anderson clearly beats it. Speed at the one two. And that's going to make this offense absolutely come to life. It's one position moved in the lineup. It's it's absolutely amazing, but that's that's what speed will do at the top. There's an odd dive back for Anderson. Well, don't forget every every one of these moves that he is seeing, he's seeing for the first time. So he can't really read Pelfrey yet. But McCann throws it well. Pelfrey, not the fastest to home plate. How long does it take to read a pitcher's move to first? It really depends on how accomplished a base stealer you are. When you pick up keys, and the keys are different against a right hander, you look at that front shoulder, you might look at the back knee. Sometimes you can get fooled because pitchers have good balk moves with the back knee. I prefer the front shoulder. If if a pitcher moves the front shoulder in, he has to go home. So that's a tip off. And if a guy is slow after he moves the front shoulder, then you can get a couple of extra steps. And a lot of base runners try to read that. Long look from Pelfrey at Anderson. Called a strike in the tip top of the zone, one and one. Belfry has his problems when he gets his two strikes. The slugging percentage against him with two strikes, 449. That's almost the bottom of 144 qualified starters. Eaton's been willing to bunt in this series. It is a ball and two strikes. A couple of good ones from Adam. Problem is, if you are going to lay it down, make sure it's a strike. And that time, that one was out of the strike zone, as you see against the Sox. When he beat the Sox at Comerica, it was the first time he had ever beaten them. His ERA up there over five and a half. Anderson is back in. Miguel Cabrera with that cursory tag just for fun. Cabrera. Remember, he offered Jose Abreu that hug last night, which is very kind of him. He's a joyful baseball player. Anderson holds it upstairs, and Tim can't go. Two balls, two strikes. Well, this is an interesting combination, and that is you got a hitter who makes contact. You got a fast man at first base, and you got a pitcher who doesn't strike out too many people. That cries out for hit and run. There's a lot of guys that, a lot of management folks don't like to hit and run in the first inning because pitchers have troubles settling in. Let's see what Robin wants. Eaton sprays it foul. Well, last night the Sox got. 
a couple of runs in that first inning. Anderson doubled. Eaton Bunt singled. And moved along on the error as Southpaw has come to join us. That's the best news yet. That is. The furry fellow. But there's a long night ahead, so it may not be the best news as the night goes along, but right now he's the leader. Don't peek too early, Pa. You're close enough with him to call him Pa? Yeah. Wow. We've been together a long time. Eaton gets hit by it on the elbow and two on, nobody out. Southpaw is distraught. You know, he gets first base, Pa. Now take a look at this and watch the elbow. Adam Eaton has an unbelievable ability to be able to look like he's turning away but that padded elbow is pretty much left there he knows his job is to get aboard he's done just that You're and on TV Southpaw why don't you mug for the camera the exuberant exuberant paw hello so where did Adam Eaton get hit you want to show us yeah right there on the elbow that's it he's just going to dust it off yeah. go to first base and hopefully score a run paw you okay? Good. Great at charades, Southpaw. <laughs> Loves charades. Even has the retro jersey on, too. We should put Southpaw on the prize shelf. We should. Be a large prize shelf. We have the virtual prize shelf today. We, we may have food to give away, a perishable prize Ooh. shelf. Strike one to Abreu. Who's hitting 265 now after a three for seven series? Jose's ground into the eight double plays, and Pelfrey, when he's right, throws a lot of ground balls. He is in a jam here in the first. Bounced foul by Abreu. Nothing in two. We uh, we expect to have some guests along the way to stop by and say hello. Sheena Quinn is here. Julie Bartos is here. Megan Golden. Who's running the PR staff is the question. Julie just yelled, where's the prize shelf? It's the it's virtual a, it's prize It's a shelf. virtual prize shelf. We're putting Southpaw on it, by the way, if anybody wants to take Southpaw home with them. There's a time to loot the PR department. It's right now. They're all here. Two strikes on Abreu. Two on. On the ground. On the charge. Iglesias the flip. Save. Smooth. Only thing you had to hope there is sometimes when you flip it with the glove, it goes high enough in the air for the base runner to beat it. But not the case with Jose Iglesias. He flips it backhand with the glove and the bare hand and throw by Kinsler. That would have been a spectacular double play. Instead, runners at the corners, only one out. Boy, that's a tough turn by Kinsler, and he handled yep. it very well, didn't he? Well, this is a this is a a great double play combination, Iglesias and Kinsler. Lacey is just 26, Kinsler 33, but playing like a much younger guy. Melky Cabrera in the air, short center. Maben gets there. Anderson coming home and scoring 1 0 Sox. What a play by Mabin to save an out. Well, he came on and made the catch, and Anderson clearly tags up. Knowing Mabin's on the ground, he's not going to get up and be able to throw you out from there. So the base hit, hit Batsman. Chases home the first run, and Chris Sale has got himself a lead, an early lead. That is good news for Mr. Sale as Frazier takes a strike. Elke drives in number 31. With his second sacrifice fly of the year.
Todd Frazier in that eight for 62. Had the day off yesterday. Tried to talk his way back into the lineup and Robin Ventura said look. Just sit down for a day. Take a day. Plenty of games left. Don't go crazy. Don't go hit 900 <laughs> balls in the cage. Just watch <laughs> the game. Ball and two strikes on Frazier. Our picks to click Al Fresco tonight from outside in the K zone. Crew goes with Tim Anderson, and that's an early lead. He's got the first run of the game. Javi Garcia for you, Mr. Stone. And I've got the catcher who homered a couple of days ago, Deonor Navarro. It's a close race. Things seem to be bunching up. It's like the AL Central. I'm going to take over the judgeship. No. You guys will have four next time we convene. You have little electability for a judge. <laughs> two and two on <laughs> Frazier. I look good in black. Yeah. And certainly in within the next week or two I'm going to need a wig. You don't look good in <laughs> equity however. <laughs> that is our view from down the line here at U.S. Cellular Field. It's a great view. What we'd like to see is the Tiger outfielders running toward the left center field wall. Frazier pokes it foul. Todd was very cordial before the game. He said look for you guys I will try and wrap one around the foul pole and give us a homer but I, I think what he wanted to do was hit us with the ball is truly his goal. Well, I want you to know that I will protect you. Thank you. Under any circumstances except if a ball comes up here really hard. OK. Yeah then it's every man for himself. Check swing. And he didn't go says the first base umpire Pat Hobart three and two. I have by the way. Fan came up very interested fan about etiquette in the K zone and how things should change a bit. OK. And I will get to it when Chris is out there when we can actually take advantage of that. You want to tell us that story about Notre Dame in the interim. You know time constraints stop me from doing that. We move along in our broadcast <laughs> due to those time constraints. Three and two. Frazier on the ground. Castellanos. Cabrera the scoop and the inning comes to an end. We are done with one. The Sox have a one nothing lead of the Melky sack fly. Here. Sounds good. Yeah. However, we have something to tell you about first. You can follow Dan Hayes, our White Sox insider, all season long. CSNChicago.com, presented by the Great Escape Pools, Patio Furniture, Hot Tubs, and more. Escape your everyday shop, the Great Escape. The question is, what is the more? Okay, so before the game, Dominic came up and he said, Look, 
here's what should happen in the K zone. It's not happening. When Chris gets the two strikes, the fans should hold up the K cards, encouraging him to strike him out with the third strike. Dominic's very concerned that they're waiting till after the strikeout to hold up the card, which is then he doesn't need encouragement because he's already struck him out, which is seemingly a good plan from Dominic. So we thank him. And uh, we'll see how that works out here. So you go down individually and tell them. I will. I'll go dispatch the message. Please. And you take over the play by play. You're very good at that. Well, only if the only way that that could really work out is if you did go down there individually and talk to these folks. Other than that, I would never do that. I particularly like the five hour game we were involved in here, and you called every pitch, which I thought was absolutely Herculean. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's the nicest thing you've said to me all year. That's a long way to go. Ball and two strikes on Nick Castellanos, who's got a couple of hits in the series, both singles. If you notice in the K zone now, with two strikes, nobody is holding up. Well, you just, I mean, you just issued the edict. Right. A high face height. Well, this is going to be a change up. Okay. In the air, center field, J.B. Shuck is patrolling that territory. And he has out number one in his glove. Four in a row retired by Sale. We're going to need the F8 zone tonight. That's four straight balls in play. I have a. What do you have? Well, I have a question that I want you to ask me. Okay. We're planting questions now? Yes. How hurt is Victor Martinez? Steve, how hurt is Victor Martinez? Did I do that right? He's not in the starting lineup and he's hit 500 against Chris Sale lifetime. So he took a cortisone shot in his knee and you would think if humanly possible he would be in this lineup tonight. He hasn't been in the lineup all three games. He's pinch hit once he walked and then immediately got off the field for a pinch runner. Well how good does 18 for 36 sound with four home runs. Pretty amazing. Well, the other Martinez has been terribly effective in this series. He's got six hits. He's six for nine and has two home runs against Sale in his career. Ironically, growing up, he was called the other Martinez. He was. Yeah. Folks like that a lot. Like the new guy when I'm walking around with you. You, yes. So three and one from Chris Sale. And in the air, foul right side, three and two on Martinez. This ballpark on a night like tonight does not play big. It was 91 degrees at game time, and it's very lively. On the ground, backhand, Frazier to peg. Two out. That's a very good play as Todd Frazier was wide of the bag. J.D. Martinez has decent speed certainly but can't outrun the arm of Frazier. He's got to give some ground. This is the long hop that he plants and puts it right on the money across to Jose. Two out Justin Upton the hitter. He has a big strikeout number to go along with those four homers, 22 RBIs. He's the sixth most likely hitter to strike out in Major League Baseball. What's happened lately, though, is he has shortened his stroke somewhat. Now, he will, on occasion, just air it out. He does that more than he would like. But he's starting to hit it. There's a rip, nothing in two. Yeah, not going to hit 94 on the inside corner too often. Leader right now in the majors and strikeout rate is Mike Napoli, who's had a fine season other than that for Cleveland. We're going to see him as the day off tomorrow, then it's on to Cleveland for three with them, four with the Red Sox, the very hot Red Sox. And there you go. Two strikes. And now, well, that is Dominic. So that's not that fair because that's the guy that orchestrated this, and it's a pretty good idea, I think. Well, so that's that's exactly the point, though. One person can start a trend, and he's trying to do that very thing. 
commend him for and that. And look, those those two young fellows have a pretty good idea. I'm not sure which idea that is, but it's a good one. Down and in, off speed, strike three, and the K zone is activated for the first time tonight. Six in a row for Sale. Sox lead by a run. And here's the advantage of playing at home. If you're Kansas City, you're the best at home. The Cubs, second best. The Rangers, right there with Baltimore and San Francisco. So they take advantage of the home cooking. Well, this is our view tonight, and it is a beautiful night. We already had some ice cream that Eileen sent up, some rainbow cone, which is great out in this weather and we're going to have a, a veritable buffet of food on the way throughout the game so don't get any on your pretty little vest there all right well I was noticing as you were literally decimating that tub of ice cream you were the same man who told me that you couldn't have ice cream before the game because it causes some throat discomfort well you make you make an exception with the best ice cream and that's the best it's a different level yeah I mean as a Chicago way. Yes. The original rainbow cone. You were growing up with that? Yeah, I mean. It's a called strike, one and one on Navarro. You ate it like it was your first meal of the homestand. I ate it like it was going away, and it was. It's hot out. It, it, was, it was kind of melting. Yeah, Eileen Flynn, though, brought it. She packed it nice. And you did share it, and I like that. Thank you. You declined, though, and I'm, I, I'm I slightly to. offended. I would have loved to ordinarily. But you know this being a Wednesday and all it's true the day that, that ends in Y right. two balls and a strike on Navarro he takes outside ball three he walked three times two nights ago in the opener of this series Navarro did Delfry's strikeout to walk ratio has not been good 34 28 strikeouts to walks there's a walk make that 29. Hey, Sox fans, come out to Specialty Beer Night on Tuesday, June 28th. This year's event will be located in the patio area. $45 ticket package includes access to the tasting from 540 until 730. Complimentary food in the patio and an outfield reserve game ticket to purchase. Visit WhiteSox.com slash specialty. We've been keeping you posted on that series where Kansas City is Entertaining Cleveland. Kansas City's won four in a row. They're a game behind the Indians and they lead tonight two to nothing. Well, the Royals have been America's wooden roller coaster as Brett Laurie puts a charge into one center field. Maven on the back pedal for round number one. I, the Royals have that long winning streak and then an eight game losing streak. They come here, they get back on track. And then they have just demolished Cleveland the last couple of days. Talking with their broadcast team, which, by the way, is one of the nicest in all of baseball. Those guys are terrific. 
They were telling us that it's just feast or famine with that team. They play in a streak where they're unbeatable. Then they play in a streak where it doesn't look like they're ever going to win a game. And that's what this season has been like. The Sox, although they were very hot at the start of the season at 23 and 10, would love to be able to get a hot streak where they put together a very long winning streak. That really hasn't happened yet. Avi Garcia with one out. Broken bat grounder. Kinsler decides to take the lead runner. Navarro is out. Two away. You would imagine, you'd imagine that. The way a streak would start would be with Sayo and Quintana beginning it, right? Well, certainly, there's a couple things have to happen. Number one, you love to take an early lead in the game, which the Sox have done tonight. Then you want to have one of your aces on the mound, which the Sox have. Then you want to be able to add to those runs, which against Pelfrey, because of his history with the Sox, you would think would happen. And so it started off according to script. Sale has thrown it awfully well. The slider looks very good tonight. And we'll see how it progresses, but right now it's an early lead. They get that lead on the Melky Cabrera sacrifice fly. And here is JB Shuck with Garcia at first in time call. This series, JB is starting to swing it a whole lot better. That's a product of getting consistent play, whether it's as the DH or the right fielder, or in the case of this evening, the center fielder. And the big positive for Shuck at center, as you said when we were giving you the, the defensive arrangement, is that Adam Eaton gets to move back to right where he's been outstanding this year. Yep. Chuck takes one. Mike Pelfrey, a former first round pick, came up through the Mets organization. Out of Wichita State, still lives in Wichita in the offseason. to the inside corner and missed one ball one strike to Shuck. Belfry's a large fellow. 6 7 to 40. Up and out two balls and a strike to Shuck. By the way, if you're watching on your phone, wherever you might be throughout the ballpark at home, you can rush over here, stop by and say hello. We are in section 154 here at U.S. Cellular Field. Which is conveniently located between 153 and 155. So if you have any trouble, just remember those two and you'll see us sitting atop our perch. I like the idea of just shuffling the deck and making the sections not be a grid system essentially. You know, 155 next to 132. See if people find their seats. It's good. That's yeah, a good test. Chuck on the ground. Kinsler to first. We want to take a moment to pass along our deepest condolences to the family, friends, and co workers of Tina Cowie. For more than 25 years as a graphics operator, Tina has been an integral part of our local game and event telecasts, including White Sox baseball. It's uh, with heavy heart that we bring the game to you tonight. Tina will always be a part of our broadcast family, and uh, she will be deeply missed. Our condolences to Tina Cowie's family.
is watching on Viola Communications in Viola, Illinois. Chris Sale welcomes James McCann with the first pitch strike. You ever been to Viola? I don't believe that I have. You ever faced Frank Viola? I remember broadcasting some of his games. Not in any of those uh, I, I fantasy used, camp I deals. Used to play. I believe we called it the Viola. Yeah, the maybe, Viola. Maybe Viola. I no. think I played that. Well, Viola might have played the Viola. I don't think so. But he was very good, by the way. Frank? Yes. In fact, he helped set up the Minnesota team. You know, he came up with Minnesota. And he was the old five for one guy. And they got some very good players back, and that was the start of some world champions for Minnesota. Those are some great teams, weren't they? They got Kevin Tappany. They got Rick Aguilera. Who had a great career. Yeah, they, I mean they got a whole lot of talent from the Mets from the uh, yeah, from the Mets for Frank Viola. Pelfrey was on the Frank Viola train with Mets twins and now here with the Tigers. 2-2 to McCann. That's hit well to left. Melky is at the wall and has to play it off the fence. McCann is safe clutching the bag with the first hit tonight for the Tigers, a leadoff third inning double. I keep taking a look at 183 for McCann, and I can't understand it because he swings it better than that. This is one of those rolling breaking balls down the middle that we featured in the open when Chris gets it there and gets it at that height. It is very hittable, so a mistake by him cost him a two base hit. And there is McCann representing the tying run. For Mike Avilas, New York native, hitting 209, he does have three hits in his series. And he fouls the bunt away, nothing in one. Avila's rolled over his wrist last night. Had to come out of the game, but is back in one day later and down against Sale. Chris Sale can stop him from doing his job here, and that job is to move McCann over to third base. He's probably going to be in pretty good shape. Get him down 0 2. Fouled away 96 on the inner third. What a night for baseball. We are hanging out in section 154. The K zone folks have their t shirts on. Awaiting an 0 2 and sale. It's another foul from Avilas. Now we have a few of the folks off to our right over here that are holding up the K zone with two strikes. We have some adult beverages being distributed. It's a great night for it. You know, a, a, a fresh squeezed lemonade sounds really good right now. You gonna buy me one? Absolutely. Breaking ball on the ground and through. Avilas is single. McCann coming home. The throw is. JB cuts him down. Let's take another look as Avilas takes a breaking ball down the middle on the fly and guns him down at the plate. Paul Emmel on the call. He got him. Well the question is did he catch the front of the plate before the tag and we will find out here. Well what happened was I don't think his front foot hit the plate because the foot of Navarro knocked his foot up over the plate. Very well may be. The question is is as it was popped up in the air did it catch a piece of the plate. And the other question is are the Tigers going to challenge it at all. 
his foot is right there at the corner and McCann watch the front foot hits his foot goes up over the plate. He tags the back foot seemingly before it got in. I think you nailed it. I think you're right. So just a base hit for Avilas. He reaches second on the throw and no challenge from Brad Osmus and the Tigers. They save it for later. Iglesias is not a big power bat but he's hit well for average against sale and well for average in this series he is down one and two against sale well, certainly looks like a few of these Tigers more than a few are looking breaking ball from Chris sale. Ball shank foul. What do you think of that approach against Sale? Not bad, especially with Chris on the last two. He threw the slider right over the middle of the plate. And what you're seeing is these guys are fighting off the fastball and looking for the slider. An unusual approach, but it seems like the one that Detroit is taking tonight. Even if you're looking for that, you're not going to hit it as Southpaw is delighting the young fans. A low five. The furriest lefty in the business. Just celebrated a birthday. He and Avi Garcia shared a cake. It's good. They have the same birthday. That ball stayed up. Eaten back on it at the wall. It is. Out of here. One of the things we told you about for tonight is it's going to be a very lively ballpark. And Iglesias, only his second home run, he's now driven in 14. And our forward home run replay, he gets a fastball up and out of the strike zone and takes it the other way. Mike Avilas tagging up to see if Adam Eaton's going to make the catch, and he can't. So the Tigers take a 2 1 lead here in the top of the third, and Kinsler launches a strike. By the way, Mr. Ice Cream Maven, your helmet has arrived. There is. Uh, there is just a land of food behind us. It is though somebody has ransacked the concession stands here at U.S. Cellular Field. Looks pretty good to me. What are we going to start with? Check swing and a ball low. One and two for Kinsler. Got a good idea. Let's start with a couple of outs and then hit the spread. <laughs> You're always thinking strategically. You don't want to go back there now and get immersed in that Sunday. That's right toward us. You know, this is one of those games you're watching on the screen that we have in front of us, and we think, <laughs> boy, that's going to be a foul ball. And then right. you look up and you think, well, we're in foul territory, <laughs> too. <laughs> Left center field and down. Splitting Cabrera and Chuck Ian Kinsler has the fourth straight hit for the Tigers. This is the second double of the inning as Kinsler gets it's an off speed fastball away and he just puts a charge into it so that brings Don Cooper out from the dugout. Double single two run homer and a double here in the third inning. J.B. Shuck gunning down McCann at the plate. So now the meeting at the mound. A couple of words from Deanna Navarro to Chris Sale as he departs. 
you saw the goggles thing for me and Kinsler as he was standing at second base. The Tigers have said that that's that's a team thing to try and keep them focused on the postseason. So sometimes after big hits, they do the goggles. Whatever it takes. Were you a goggles guy? No, but Chris Sabo was. In the case of the Tigers, if the goggles can help their bullpen, they're going to be in good shape because they get enough hitting. They get enough hitting for a lot of teams. Strike to Mabin, who bounced out to Abreu in the first. Cameron Maben has made the rounds after originally being a Tiger draft pick. Fouled off, ball and two strikes on Maben. Well, he originally went to Florida, and then he was acquired from Atlanta. So the Tigers. Saw him briefly in 2007, shipped him off to Florida in a deal that brought them Miguel Cabrera. Frazier charges and gets out number two. Hey fans, when you think mortgage in Chicago, think e click lending. Whether looking to purchase or refi, never. Pay lender fees with eClick Lending. Visit us online at eclicklending.com to lock in your low rate today. eClick Lending. Point, click, and save. So, no lender fees at all? I would say normally there would be lender fees, but you never play or pay lender fees with eClick. How about that? And an intentional walk. I can understand that. Yeah, for. Miguel Cabrera, there are no fees for bypassing him as well. So, first and third coming up as ball four is on the horizon. They're getting wonderful shots of the food as we speak. Have you ever had smelts? You're going to need to turn around for this. Yep. Uh, here, is, here is exactly what we're going to be eating. Have you ever had smelts? Smelts? Yes. I don't know what that is. Well, they're a wonderful thing that you get from the lake. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's a Chicago favorite. It is? Yeah, along with Indiana. Now, there aren't any there. I'm just asking you if you ever had any. No, but we have basically every other food that's ever been created. The you, Comiskey Burger. Yeah, you got the, and you get the two-foot-long hot dog, which I believe is optimistic. Looks to me like no more than maybe a foot and three-quarters. Oh, there's a there's a helmet. Sunday. And there it is, and you better get to that before it melts. I've had some trouble doing that tonight. Castellanos delivers an RBI. Three-one Tigers. So after the intentional walk, Castellanos first pitch ambush. That's a change up. It was out away from Nick, but it was where he wanted it, which was thigh high, and he delivers RBI number 38. Been a very troublesome inning for Chris Sale. Detroit has a two run lead for Mike Pelfrey. Fastball inside to JD Martinez. When you talk about the balance in this lineup, Martinez has had such a fine series. He's behind Castellanos. Upton to follow. Bold foul, one and one for Martinez, the former Houston Astro. Took something off, one and two on Martinez. Tigers have five hits in the inning and three runs.
Tigers came in second in the league in hitting behind Boston. They lead by a wide margin. Boston hitting 290, the Tigers hitting 271 coming in. That will improve. Breaking ball strike three, and the K zone has something to cheer about for the second time tonight. Second punch out for sale. Tigers grab three, middle three. You like some? He's got a chicken parm. Chicken parm sandwich. He has a taco. Yep. He has that helmet full of ice cream, which he will Stop have it. after he has that. You want a bite? Here. What do you think? No, we, uh, tell him right quick. Tell him right now. It's good. It's really? really good. Is it? I'm going to keep eating it. You enjoying it? Yeah, play by play. Okay, I'll be more than happy. With, um, with food. Well, Anderson leading it off. He had a base hit and scored a run in the first inning. That's a strike. Is that good? It's great. I uh, earlier I already got ice cream on my scorebook, so we've had a good start tonight. I can see that. Pelfrey misses outside, one ball, one strike. It is rude to eat when nobody else is eating, though. Well, ordinarily I would, but you know I get so intense for these games. It's like camping. Well, almost. Except with a shower in center field. One and two for Anderson, who singled and scored back in the first. It's a good taco, you know that? Well, that's all they have here is good food. I agree. Yeah. I mean, there's there are buckets of food back here as your name gets yelled by any number of people. That's because foul. They're taking a look at that table enviously. The one that you fairly decimated. Wow, there's a missing taco. Did you grab a second taco that you have in your pocket? No. Pocket taco? <laughs> My mom's here too. How about that? Inside. Really? Uh huh. There she is. She's got her K Zone card. You want to bring her up? Talking to Bob Grimm. Let her She's do play fine. by play while you eat the taco in the chicken farm. Piece of steak on my scorebook. <laughs> two and two. That foul by Anderson. Tigers got three runs in their turn at bat this half inning. And that is our view tonight from inside the K zone. Broken bat. Yeah, he's going to need another one. And you know, before the game, 
Yeah. Jim Corno Jr. came up to check on our well being, which he does quite a bit. And we were talking about added tickets being sold tonight in the K zone because you and I were going to be here. And I think it's something in the neighborhood of 5,000 tickets in the K zone. Is that right? That capacity? No, I think it was 300, but it sounded like 5,000 to me. Oh, about that. That was pretty good. Taco's gone, by the way. It's a taco update. Sure, you don't want any? Well, I don't want any of that taco. It's gone. Kinsler down to a knee and got him by a step. Friday night, the Sox kick off their road trip with a pivotal weekend series against the AL Central leading Indians. It all starts at 6 p.m. on CSN Chicago. You'll be there. I will be there, and Michael that Lake. is the city of my birth. It is. Yeah. Which which hospital? I was born at I was born I believe in a tent in the backyard. My my parents were holistic. A wedding they broke out. Yeah, they didn't believe in going to hospitals necessarily. Ooh, now you're into the chicken farm. Yeah, but this is going to be. I can't do this while we're on the air. I'm going to get it all over the place. It's going to get ugly fast. You know that. Eaton slices it left field Adams on with a base hit with one down. This fastball is down the middle and Adam Eaton slices it into left field. So with the man who's been hot lately Jose Abreu he gets a chance to hit with another man on. First time up, grounded into a force play with two men on. That led to Anderson scoring on the sacrifice fly by Melky. For the Lone Sox run of the night. Abreu in the air. Right field, Martinez. Out of the warning track for round number two. We talked about that first White Sox run and with the first White Sox run he quick landing has donated one hundred dollars to the Pat Tillman Foundation supporting military veterans and their families and there is the sacrifice fly and there is Tim Anderson. One quick note from the booth there is marinara sauce on my computer. But that's that's actually a good thing to do because you can save it and eat it after the game. Off of my computer. Sure. Mm. Two out. One on for Melky, who happens to be the tying run at this moment, and he watches strike number one. So all these teams are bunched up in the central, yep. and we've seen all of them recently. Mm -hmm. Who stands out most to you? Who's the team that right now is the scariest? In the central. You know, it's, it's tough it's, to say, right? It's, yeah, it's really hard to say at this point for the simple reason that each team has some very strong points, some gaping weaknesses, and the ability to add. So, you look at the Indians' starting rotation; it's their strength. You look at the Tigers' their offense; that's their strength. Kansas City back end of the bullpen is their strength. That and the fact that they can catch the ball and normally play pretty good defense. Kinsler, solid defense to retire this side. Eaton stranded, third inning gone, 3 1. Tigers showering the Sox. This is
as he started the season and Chris Sale lately. The first nine starts, brilliant. 9-0, 158 ERA. Opponents didn't hit anything, gave up the five home runs and three complete games. Last four, one and two ERA, six and three quarters with an opponent batting average of 351. That's most on sale like, and we've seen today when he's missed his spots, as most pitchers, you miss your spots, you're going to give up some hits, and this Tiger team is red hot offensively. You can't afford to miss your spots all that often. Hits that spot with a strike. Two. The leadoff batter just adopted. It. it was really nice of your mother to stop up. Yeah. And to say hello. Yeah. And to show you her K sign. As Navarro gets clipped. What, what did you charge her for the tickets? Uh, nothing this time around. Okay, well, don't spoil it. I won't. Okay, don't worry. Picture time with some of the greats. Fans love it out there. Two strikes for Upton. Yeah, that is upstairs. One ball and two strikes. You were getting to chat with some fans in between a half innings. They're very friendly. They come up, say hello, give us some notes. I've got one here. Is that Sa true? Yeah, Sandra Grazaday is celebrating her 80th birthday, and when you are celebrating your 80th birthday, you've got to get this in early in the game. You never know. Oh, there's another friend of yours just stopped by. It is the Universal Dentist, Jack Ruby, his daughter Laura, his grandson, one of his many, Michael. Michael's Mike, a good kid. Michael's a good kid. Very happy young man. Mostly happy when he gets away from Jack. I don't know why that is. It's a cause and effect, I believe. Strike three for sale on Upton. Jack Ruby is the lucky K zone man tonight. He stops by, and there it goes. And the K zone is going wild. That one in the zone, and Upton will have a seat. That's the second time he's done that, but he's no stranger to that, as you pointed out. Off a sale, back to sale. Alone, it's sale. Your socks math question tonight goes like this using the hashtag socks math. First one in wins a prize off the virtual prize shelf. Number of letters in the last name of the person in whose zone we're sitting. Multiply by the number of letters in the full first name of that same person. Add the position in the alphabet of the letter that signals a strikeout and subtract the number of consecutive times the person in question in the first two. The guy who's pitching has been named to the All-Star game. That's where socks math question hashtag socks math. You win something off the virtual prize shelf if you're the first one in. You can also win some of our perishable food. We've got some great things on the prize shelf, the virtual prize shelf. We're giving away Jack Ruby tonight because he's standing right in front of our fan. It's a billion degrees here. Right center field, J.B. Shuck in pursuit. And two down. Three down. 3-1, your score after three and a half.
with one on one with my partner Steve Stone on a brand new edition of Inside Look. He'll share great stories about working with the great Harry Carey as well as more on his playing and broadcast careers and maybe even something about tonight's broadcast. Inside Look, Steve Stone presented by Cadillac premieres tomorrow night at 7 on CSN Chicago. And uh, well, the food is still going. We've got the chicken parm sub still alive in part. The and ice cream sundae is back there. The ice cream sundae is back there, fairly intact. And you do have part of that sandwich on your computer, which will play well later. You know, and y'all, you should probably write down the outs when they happen in your scorebook would be a good idea. Isn't yeah, that? that's, you know, that, that's a technicality. But, you know, before the game, we answered questions on Facebook. Yep. And it was really entertaining as you drop your silverware. But don't worry, there's plenty more where that came from. There's a backup. You're doing good. That looks like a really good sandwich. You want some? Uh, no. The ball outside to Todd Frazier. So Sale gets cleanly through the top of the fourth, and Frazier, who bounced out in the first inning, trying to help the Sox to a comeback. I'd like to send along best wishes on a speedy recovery to a good friend of mine. I saw him today, George Lamparis, and he's going to have surgery tomorrow. He is the owner, proprietor, and bon vivant of the Palace Grill. Those of you who go to see the Bulls and the Blackhawks know that it's right on Madison. Wonderful place, and I've got to take you there sometime, have you pay for an extravagant meal. George, recover quickly, and we hope to see you up and around. So, good man. Very kind of you. He also, by the way, is a big, a big fan of yours in a short period of time. Really? Yeah. It's ball four to Frazier. Lead off walk for the Sox here in the fourth inning. Here's your Sox math answer for tonight. Number of letters in the last name of the person whose zone we're sitting is Sale. That's four. Multiply the letters in his full first name, Christopher, 11. Position in the alphabet, K is 11, plus 11, minus four. Sale, four straight, all-star game. Namings. 51 is the answer, and SSS Pete Olds is your winner. The machine is broke. Congratulations, Patrick. It's unbelievable. He is the king of the Sox math universe. By the way, you don't have the light bulb, the gigantic light bulb for him, if he does win the Tournament of Champions. Well, yeah, that's that's the prize that's up for grabs. Next homestand, the Tournament of Champions, halfway through the year. There's a strike to Navarro, nothing and one. We're going to have a very difficult Sox math question for that Tournament of Champions. I would hope so. These are getting ridiculously easy. By the way, a good time to come back against Pelfrey because second time through, and certainly third time through, he struggles. Down the line and fair for Navarro. Avilas has it kick around on him. And Frazier scoots into third, second and third. Nobody out for the Sox in the fourth. Slice down the line. And Deanna Navarro is making it a very entertaining fourth inning. So he's been on twice. And the Sox in the middle and the bottom part of the order trying to climb right back into this one. Well, the chance around us right now is let's go White Sox. And it's for Brett Lorry, who's got two in scoring position. Hit the ball well last time up. Driving Mabin very deep in center field. Does it again, it drives in a run. Nothing at one. Infield back in the middle. They're going to concede the run to try to stay out of the big inning. Yep, they're back. There's video confirmation. A 
walk high one ball one strike for Lori. Brett has a total of no sacrifice flies. Belfry is pitching him upstairs however. Lead off walks usually lead to runs especially when you're not a strikeout pitcher. Two balls and a strike. Laurie well on his way to his career high in doubles which was twenty nine. Last season with Oakland he has 17 already this year. Chopper Cabrera out at first. Frazier comes around to score, and Navarro is along to third. This is a one run game. I'd be at number 26, and Miguel Cabrera has to wait for gravity. Eventually, you know it's going to come down. If you're the Tigers, you just hope it comes down before Laurie gets there, and he loses by a half step. By the way, uh, Mr. Maguism runs in Jack Ruby's family. His daughter Laura has locked herself out of the apartment. I graciously offer your place for her and her son to stay. Thank you. Yeah. Just in case. There's there's always friendliness in your heart. Thank you. Navarro at third, one down for Garcia. And a foul ball for Bobby. So the leadoff walk. Does come back as Frazier drew the walk, and scored the run. And now Deandre Navarro, 90 feet away from plating the tying run. The infield is now in. They don't have to play all that far in because Navarro doesn't have a great deal of speed. So you play in commensurate with the speed of the man at third base. In this case, it's Navarro, so the infield. Is not at the grass. They don't have to be. One and one for Ravi. It's Pelfrey. He really enjoyed that confrontation, although Pelfrey got the best of him in the second inning. Fielder's choice in that second inning went 4 6 off the bat of Garcia. Inside 1 and 2. And McCann coming out. He wants a word with Belfry. Is our look tonight from here at U.S. Cellular Field. Sun on the way down, nighttime beginning to fall, and the Sox building a fourth inning rally. We don't have that boom cam in the booth with us. Great, mo big. great mobility. Hoppy fights it off. Pelfrey intent to throw it inside. Jim Angel, our director, says it's called a jib. So we ought to have that jib in the booth with us. We should. There's the look that the jib is getting. If we only were riding on it. Yeah. There's Joe Groob, Bob Grimm, and us. Hello. It looked like one of the things that McCann went out to say was if you throw him inside it appears he's going to be swinging at just about everything. The one problem throwing that far inside is you run the risk of hitting him which is something he doesn't want to do. 
with a left hander J.B. Shuck in the on deck circle. Oh, it has been an interior snowball fight according to pitch tracks. Slider away. First strike out for Pelfrey so the productive out goes by the boards and two down. Strike zone expansion and this ball is well off the plate. Avi cannot check it up. Now it does fall to J.B. Shuck. Pelfrey winding his way through a walk and a double. Then the RBI ground out from Laurie, and now Shuck with Tim Anderson next. Strike on the outside corner. Big RBI opportunity for J.B. Shuck, who, as you said last night, getting consistent at bats, hitting the ball harder. Pops this one up. Mabin trying to locate it and does. We finish off the fourth inning. Sox grab a run on the RBI from Lori. 3-2, Tigers the lead. Field a grand night for a ball game as the Tigers lead the Sox on a three run third. Jason Benetti, Steve Stone along with you, and some of our closest friends out here in the left field side in the K zone for Chris Sale, 154 through 156. We're enjoying the weather, and Sale trying to get a comeback from his offense after the Tigers touched him for three runs. Long way to go in this one. And it's been an offensive series, but so far, pitchers thrown it pretty well. Strike one to Iglesias. Jose Iglesias, the big blow of the game for the Tigers, a two-run home run. 
Then Castellanos, a couple batters later, with an RBI single to give the Tigers their third run. As Todd Frazier nestles next to the bag and makes the catch for the first out. Sox fans join us as the White Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays on Saturday, June 25th at 110. First 20,000 fans get a White Sox beach towel presented by Shark Week starting June 26th on Discovery. Purchase your tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Well, I remember this day perfectly. You do? Yep. Back in 1978. Long time ago. Yeah, but you know what? Memory like a steel trap. Like a steel drum? Yes. Laren Legro and I combined on a three hitter. I probably gave up all of them. No. Oh, we defeated Texas. Don't say that. 1978. Like it was just yesterday. You know what else happened today? It's 14 years later, 1992. The first team ever affiliated with the Florida Marlins threw its first pitch. It was a minor league team. I don't know if people remember the Marlins came after their minor league affiliates. They had to start developing talent. Yep. The first pitch was thrown by the Erie Sailors in the New York Penn League. And the very first pitch from any Florida Marlin affiliated pitcher was from John Lynch out of Stanford who ended up being an all pro safety in the NFL Lynch got drafted by the Marlins then turned to football thereafter the thing about John Lynch after he threw you the pitch he eviscerated you with a head high tackle you ever watched him play you realize he was a prolific hitter yeah he he would not have been able to play the game that he did now <laughs> no. no he was a tough guy that got him Kinsler is hit by the pitch. The question is usually when Sale does this, does the guy swing? And Navarro wants the appeal. The question is, did he swing? Because if he did swing, it's just a painful strike. I actually think he swung, Steve. Looked to me certainly like if not at the beginning, he followed through. What appeared to be a swing. He would have gone in the Trumbo category. True. Hit by a strikeout. And Tory Hunter before that. It's Cameron Maven who loads up to take ball number one. Jose Reyes, who has had an interesting career, designated for assignment by Colorado Rocky. Because he was a very good player for a long time, violated the baseball's joint domestic violence policy, suspended for 51 games, and then after being added to the 40 man roster, he was DFA'd by the Rockies. Designated for assignment yep. is what that stands for. It means you're pulled off the 40 man roster. There are still options for you in terms of choices of what can happen maybe options is the wrong word because it's the opposite of sure. being put on waivers yeah. but you have you have a chance to go down to the minors or be claimed by somebody else and you know with with his problems Trevor Story came up played shortstop and sitting everything in sight and has a chance to make the all star game so Trevor Story took advantage of the situation. Anderson, Lori, save. This may be worth the challenge. Rick Renteria on the phone. He wants to see exactly what happened at first. We'll watch it again. Nope, oh, he's safe. It's only worth the challenge if you want to lose it. In that case, yes, and unfortunately. That half step keeps the inning alive for Miguel Cabrera, who last night had four hits. He's 0 for 1 tonight. He was intentionally walked in the third inning. 
strike to him. The next batter on the next pitch, Nick Castellanos, punched a single to left field to score the most recent run for the Tigers. Kinsler came home. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, 10 time All Star. Former Marlin himself. And we were talking about that first pitch ever thrown in the Marlins organization. There was also, a, there was a minor league team back before the Florida Marlins. Miami became, Miracles? Well, they also had the Miami Marlins yep. at one point. But not the Miami Giants, who you clearly would have played for had they existed. I played for most of the minor league giant teams. <laughs> Never for Yomi Yuri though, right? No. Hmm. Would have been nice, but no. But maybe you were the second person they had in mind for Tom Selleck and Mr. Baseball. Did you like that movie? I did. I thought it was good, but that was when I was a kid. I haven't seen it recently. The chance to meet him. He was a very nice guy. Did you really? Love baseball, yeah. Very nice guy. One and two on Cabrera. Mabins at first, two down. And he didn't go. Two balls, two strikes on Miguel Cabrera. He started to go, and it takes very strong hands and wrists to be able to check it up once you start out there on the path of swinging. Cabrera has those, certainly. Wally Joyner, their hitting coach, talking about Cabrera, said there's nothing that he can't do. He's confident that if he wanted to shorten his swing enough, he could be knocking at the door of 400 each and every year. He said it's a wonderful combination. He's got the eye of a leadoff hitter. He has the hands of a 400 hitter. He has the power of a guy that can hit 35 home runs and drive in 120 when he wants to in a combination of one player who when he's healthy is probably the perfect hitter because there's really nothing he can't do. Two and two on Cabrera and he goes down swinging sail elates the K zone with his fourth punch out tonight. Let's go shopping. It's on Steve.
you have ice cream, we suggest that you eat it quickly because it turns into ice cream soup. If you don't, there are two spoons. Would you like some? No, but I will tell you the big problem you're going to have because it is absolutely, well, I would say condensation yes. is affecting the bottom of your helmet. It's condensation, Johnny. Anderson racks it to right field, and Tim Anderson with yet another extra base hit as it clangs off the wall. He loses his cap. Anderson into third. Two hits tonight. Tim Anderson slicing it down the line, and then when he realizes that Martinez could not corral it, he's off to the races. Into third, standing up. He gets a fastball low and away. And this one takes an unusual hop. A triple for Anderson. That's not going to be the last one we're going to see. This young man has great speed, hits the ball hard. That's his first major league triple to go with three doubles. He has looked the part. Uh, has look, he? Looked terrific. Just terrific. Adam Eaton. A chance to tie the game and then some. He takes ball number one from Pelfrey. The infield is back. They're in at the corners. Cabrera is in. Castellanos is in, but in the middle, they're both back conceding the run. That'll get the job done. Anderson scores. Eaton plates him 3-3 in the fifth. That's how it's supposed to happen with these two at the top. Well, Adam Eaton's going to make some contact, and that's the best thing about him in the two spot. So Anderson's been on twice, scored two runs. Adam Eaton had a perfect night until that ground out, but you'll certainly trade the run batted in for the ground ball. That's his 22nd run batted in. And Chris Sale finds himself right back in the middle of a new game tied at three. You alluded to this earlier, but is it not amazing what a transformation a lineup can have with just one new piece in one new spot? Well, there's no doubt there's an infusion of energy to the ball club. And also from a practical standpoint, you've got the two speed guys at the top. Anderson has a very lively bat. And together tonight, they've been on base four times in six at bats. I mean, you can't ask for anything more from the one and two. And with that, and we're assuming that Cabrera and Frazier behind Abreu are going to start producing. Maven into a slide for good measure and two down. Oh, what a night in the Windy City. One of the most beautiful skylines in the world. To home Chicago. It's absolutely a gorgeous night. It was 91 degrees at game time. It's dropped precipitously to 89 degrees. Hot night, but not as sticky as we felt early in this homestand. You were clinging to your chair for most of that Kansas City series. Yeah, it was uh, it was a little humid, no doubt. Well, you decimated that chicken parmesan sandwich. Melky crushes this ball right center field and just short of the wall. He chugs in with a two out double here in the fifth. This is third time through the lineup, and as you move through the lineup again and again with Mike Pelfrey he has more and more difficulty. He throws this one pretty much down the middle and Melky unloads on it. He's got a sacrifice fly to go with that double. So a triple and a double along with a line drive rocket off the bat of Abreu that found a sliding Maben right in front of it. Good opportunity for Frazier to drive one in. Two out, runner at second. And Todd's hit.
Frazier hit for just the third time this year. Catches it off the tricep. Looks like it's above the padding, so that can't feel too good. And the Tigers want to get some action in the bullpen as Gene Lamont, former Sox skipper, makes a call. And as we learned the other day, those phones don't have numbers on them. You pick them up and they ring immediately. That is the Greg Sparks rule. Evidently, the video room had a great deal of fun with <laughs> our pal Greg Sparks I'm for sure. his phone gambit. I'm sure of that. That he played two nights ago. You know, he was basically Lucy on the assembly line trying to eat the chocolates as it was going on through. All pretty three good. phone boxes were open. Great episode, by the way. Oh, yeah. Was it made a couple of years ago? It was in color, <laughs> only in certain circles. Outside, 2 0 for Navarro. Frazier at first, Cabrera at second. Sox looking for a series win against the Tigers before a trip to Cleveland over the weekend. Here is Greg Sparks, who was a former bat boy for the White Sox, including on Disco Demolition Night. His father, Joe, a great man, a baseball lifer. Greg's a good man, too. Yes, he Always is. has time for you. Thoughtful guy. Doesn't know how to answer a phone to save his life. Jeffrey got a break there as that ball was up and out of the zone. But he got the benefit of the call. Two balls and a strike rather than 3 and 0 oh on Navarro. Fouled off two balls two strikes. Not a whole lot of pitches for Pelfrey. The 76 of them. Farmer the right hander, Hardy the left hander. Buck Farmer who just came up after the demotion of Bobby Parnell. Farmer was down for 10 days, so he was able to be called back up before yesterday's game. There's a 10 day window after you've been opted before you can come back barring injury. Right. If there's an injury then you can come back otherwise no. Three and two on Navarro. Big advantage as the runners will be going. Popped it up. The can inside the circle for out number three. The Sox get a run and tie the game. It's the ice cream of the future at the ball yard. End of today.
to you by American Sale. It's five innings, five hits, three earned runs with just one walk and four strikeouts, much to the delight of the K zone. They're a delightable populace. The K zone. They are. Seems like a few of the folks have taken advantage of some of the excess of our food shelf. Oh, yeah. The tacos are all gone. It's just a capital W left that was holding the tacos. Like that. Just some good seats down there too for the youngsters, the scout seats. Sixth inning, Nick Castellanos is the batter. He takes inside. Did you bring your little light for us? You have a table lamp that you were supposed to bring and you forgot it. No, didn't actually, you? what I did have. But I did unfortunately leave it at home with something even better than that. And you received one of them also. Oh, the pen with the light. Our dear friend Lou Weisbach gave us a pen which doubles as a very bright light. But just as yours is, so is mine at our respective houses. Yes. It does us no good here tonight. I actually used mine last night, and I was thinking, oh, I should bring that. And Nope. Didn't do it. So if anybody's got a lamp at the ballpark, they want to bring it over to us. We're in section 154. Or a Klieg light for an opening you might have. Big swing and a miss from Castellanos, who is a free swinger. Two balls and two strikes. Or even, you know what? One of those mining helmets with the lamp on the top. So Steve can go spelunking. Ooh, I like that. In between innings. Caves are my life. By the way, he hurt his hand on that one more high fastball, and he can soak it on the bench after a strikeout. That was low where not, he likes it. Not a low fastball, but another high fastball just like the last one. Did you ever read the book Shibumi? That's not on the shelf. Nope. Trevenian wrote it, which was a pseudonym, and they probably devoted 90 pages to Spelunky. Check swing. And no go. Three and two. Take a look at it from the side. Castellanos able to check it up. Just barely, but the correct call. Shibumi, huh? Yep. Three and two. Went upstairs slightly. Is there a book on tape? Well, that was was from the Wayback Machine. Sherman. Hmm? <laughs> yes, Sherman. Three and two. Castellanos and Sale. On the ground, Frazier. One away. Provide your guests with the ultimate all inclusive White Sox experience in the home plate club or Magellan Scout seats. These two premium seating areas are the best way to entertain your most important clients, employees, friends, or family. For more information, call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesox.com slash premium seating. Wind's starting to pick up here at U.S. Cellular Field tonight. I know in this situation it's feeling pretty good out here. And that went off the foot of J.D. Martinez, so he's hopping around. So after Cleveland came back to tie Kansas City, Kansas City has opened it up. It's a 6-2 to two game in the bottom of the fifth in Kansas City. Corey Kluber on the mound for the Tribe. And the good news about that is that most likely we will not face him as we wend our way to Cleveland on the off day tomorrow. Sox will see the Indians for a three game series over the weekend. Salvador Perez again tonight. He had the big homer last night. He's got a homer off Kluber a three run shot tonight in this fifth inning and the Royals are on the verge of deadlocking Cleveland at the top of the central. And this is what it looks like coming in. Kansas City. Well, if they win that one, it's going to be an exact tie. 
for Detroit. The Sox and Minnesota way back. Talk about the way back machine. Twins got in at the beginning of the year and haven't gotten out. Upstairs with a fastball, Martinez is sent away by Sale. Strikeout number five. And Steve is leading the cheers of the K zone. Ah, the K zone is going wild. A high fastball. And you see where Navarro wants it? That's exactly where Chris Sale got it. This is one of the better low fastball hitting teams in the major league. Two down for Upton. Is it just a collection of guys who hit the ball yeah. low well, or is it, it is. a philosophy? No, I think that it's a collection of guys that happen to hit the ball down. A lot of them have uppercut swings. It's been a good bounce back for Chris Sale. He had a very tough third, had a very easy first and second, a very tough third. Back to an easy fourth. Only one walk in the fifth, and two up, two down here. Until that shot from Upton, who had struck out the first two times, and figured if you don't get to strike two, you can't strike out. So 101 pitches, and you can see we told you the trouble spot in the third. 35 of them. Other than that, it's been pretty consistent. In that Cleveland series, by the way, Jose Quintana, Trevor Bauer in the opener, James Shields. Danny Salazar on Saturday and on Sunday. Carlos Rodon and Carlos Carrasco in the Battle of Carloses. We had the Battle of the Gonzalez's earlier in the homestand. Gio and Miguel. Battle of Carlos's coming up from your hometown. Apparently the speed pitch, pitch machine is right behind us in 155. So if you want to know just how fast you can throw the ball and if you want to possibly have a rotator cuff surgery in your future, that would be a good place to give it a shot. Is there a surgical center just next door? Uh, yes, funny, Anthony Romeo would be the guy you'd want to talk to. Swing and a miss, strike three, sale. Gets hit for a single but strikes out a pair. Brett Laurie leads it off. Javi Garcia follows. JB Shuck third in the sixth at a tie. Sticks and stone. We do. Yep. Our ice sponsor cream, is ice cream soup. Ice cream soup. 
has just bought into <laughs> sticks and stones. So that's that's big news. That's here. absolutely terrific. Yeah, it's America's <laughs> fastest growing sensation. <laughs> presented by Ice Cream Soup. Who are you facing tonight? It's Sweet Lou. Oh, it's Lou Whitaker. You know, he was so much older than I was that I, I didn't believe that I faced him. But I guess if I faced Alan Trammell, I faced Lou Whitaker. Yeah, they, they played together. Yeah. Eh? I'm thinking, well, I probably didn't do that well. He was a left-hand hitter to the right-hand hitting counterpart, Alan Trammell. Part of a great double play combination for a team that just pasted me over the course of my career. So quite often you lead into Six and Stone by saying, well, he was a left-handed hitter and I did poorly against him. Right. But well, it, sometimes you've said, well, he was a right-handed hitter. And I did poorly <laughs> against him. So which type of hitter was the best type of hitter for you? With the exception of Jim Rice, any guy who had a big swing wanted to hit the ball eight miles and he hit right handed and he wasn't a good hitter and he didn't make the major leagues. Those are the guys I got out. Not a good hitter, not the majors. <laughs> Lori flies out to his counterpart to pop to Kinsler and one down. Well, you know what happened just now? This was really weird because I couldn't understand how my foot could possibly be stuck to whatever this is down here. Yeah, and, the floor. And then I found out because it was a convenient throat drop that seems to be finding its way into inconvenient places. It was on the bottom of my shoe. You stepped on a used lozenge? Yes. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I could not get my foot off the ground for the mobile shot that we had to lead off this inning. The dangers of outdoor broadcasting. Strike one to Avi Garcia, who's grounded out and struck out tonight. You're still stomping your foot in a gummy fashion. Avi flips it to right center, and that's a hit. Now that, to me, appears on the surface because he represents a go-ahead run to be the key hit of the night. I think that in itself would merit pick to click status. A friend of mine is a lobbyist, a White Sox season ticket holder. He's never been as good at his job as you are right now lobbying. Take a look at that. Hey, whoa! Nice pizza. It's interesting because that one doesn't have any sausage on it, but the young man has one with a lot of sausage. I don't know if you know Beggar's Pizza, but they do lay it on thick. You and Beggar's Pizza both. Thank you. I love that reaction by that kid, though. The first thing he said was, go pizza. And then his friend said, let's go socks. Well, of course. I mean, that's concession <laughs> stands are what kids live for. Pizza is never not in first place. No, it's, it's really good. We're being hypnotized by the pizza. Hey, snap out of it. <laughs> One on one out for Shuck, who fouled the ball off his body on the first pitch. Pelfrey, pitch number 85 tonight. 0 oh 2. You ever ask yourself what it would be like to throw over 28 straight scoreless innings in the major leagues? The experience it would be, the joy you would get from that, the invincibility that would build up. You done? No. I've never asked myself any of those okay, things. Okay, because T-Mobile's coming. I, this that's foreshadowing, by the way. Two strikes, and that's up high. I did when we had that sensory clinic at the beginning of the homestand. Mm -hmm. I walked out with the kids out to the pitcher's mound, and the first thing I thought was, you know what, it actually looks closer than I would have expected to home plate. We do see a very large man with a stick in his hand hitting one back to you about 105 miles an hour. You see how close it really looks. That's the sticks version of sticks and stone. Well, I got to tell you, that's frightening. Sometimes they whiz right by your head. And literally, and you can see it on replays, the pitcher will get the glove up and the ball's in center field nothing you can do there's sometimes you cannot defend Garcia's back bullpen up 
Matt Albers throwing in the pen and the best part of him throwing in the bullpen is that we have an angle where we can literally see him warming up in every pitch he's throwing. It would take you about 30 seconds to get out there put on gear and catch a couple of his pitches from where we are. Yeah. Yep. I'll let you know if he loses control of one. Hopefully on time. Garcia at first one and two is in the dirt and Avi holds at first two balls two strikes. Sox got a run in the fifth a run in the fourth and a run in the first the Tigers went bulk shopping in the third with a three run third inning all of their runs in that trip up. That is Bob Love. Sitting next to Mickey Norton, who's on his left. Mickey, just a wonderful woman. She has been in the ownership group of both the White Sox and the Bulls for many years. Iglesias Kinsler and a Detroit double play. We go to the seventh in a dead heat. Brought to you by T-Mobile. And we talked about Michael Fulmer. It's been a miraculous run. Last five starts, 5-0. and 0. 0.26 ERA. Opponents hitting nothing. And 34 and a third innings. Only 13 hits. 28 and a third consecutive scoreless innings. That represents the longest active streak in the major league. Michael Fulmer getting it done for the Tigers. Just what they need, another successful starting pitcher in Detroit. Yeah, that throws a lot of strikes also. 3-3 tie into the seventh inning tonight from U.S. Cellular Field as we bring it to you from the K-Zone this evening. Our entire crew, and by the way, Mark Harper, our technical manager, did a wonderful job. He and his crew setting up this entire area that we've got above the K-Zone. Not only did he do a good job, he continues to do a good job. He has given us a light so we can actually see, which is good. What a lot of I, sure, away. I sure hope you don't step forward. What? Well, you have your ice cream helmet and the remnants of the chicken parmesan I think those would taste good together for you later on in the night pitch number 108 for sale is a fastball upstairs two and two on Avilas out of Concordia College Bronxville a New York guy through and through three balls two strikes they ever play Kent State no. D2 versus D1. 
We went on a southern trip. It was 33 when we left Kent, 32 when we got to our southern trip place. <laughs> Anderson, nicely done, out number one. Chris would love to go one, two, three, and then not have to worry about the bullpen until perhaps his offense got him at least one and maybe making him eligible to get a win here. That 11th win has been evasive for Major League Baseball recently. Steven Strasburg was unable to get it today. Despite throwing pretty well. Hook for a strike from Sale to Iglesias. Off the corner, one ball, one strike. Iglesias, the third lowest slugging percentage in Major League Baseball coming in. He has a two run homer to his name tonight. The whole people in opposite field, two run a homer in the third inning. By the way, before the third and after the third, Chris has only given up one hit. He gave up five of them in the third. Well, we've seen it. I mean, it's been significantly more the home run ball than any big innings against Sale generally in this give, season. Yeah, giving up many more home runs than he normally would. Frazier awaits. And the peg for round number two. I want to tell you how quick you have to adjust when you're a major league third baseman because this ball was on the ground the whole way and you anticipate it's going to stay on the ground watch it he gets it inside breaks the bat stays on the ground and all of a sudden takes an unusual hop at the end he stays right with it the only way you can do that is if the glove is down which it is and then you come up with the hop if you keep your glove high you can't go down if it flattens out he looked backhand ready there yeah, just in case. I mean, you know, it came off with a lot of spin, and he really didn't know where it was going to wind up. He found out, staying in front of it, and came up with the hop. Hey, how does the spin differ off a left hand, right hand bat? Is there any difference? No, it really depends on where they hit the baseball on the bat. Left hand, right hand doesn't matter. It's all going to move toward the line, and the defenders know that. So. Right hand hitter, he's going to slice it toward the right field line if he hits it that way. He's going to hook it toward the left field line if he hits it that way. Left hander is going to hook it toward the right field line or slice it toward the left field line, so everything will move toward the line. Not that. He's moving toward the dugout. Strike three for Sale and a 1 2 3 inning for him. Kazon rejoices. Stretch time. 3 3. Been thinning at U.S. Cellular Field. Let me check in with Sierra Santos. Sierra. 
Jason, I met a really big fan of yours. His name is Joe Starr. He got to meet you, meet Jason before the game, that is. What makes Jason such a cool broadcaster? Oh, man, Jason, he, he really knows his stuff. He seems to really know his statistics. He uh, has great puns throughout the game. I'm always laughing. And he's really good with his pop culture references. And I always think he's funny and great to listen to. I believe we just recently had an I Love Lucy reference is the most recent. And mom, you've been here three times this week. You love sitting in the K-Zone. I got to ask, what do you do with all the t-shirts? I'm going to make a quilt for my next grandchild. I decided. And dad, you enjoy watching. This is a family is a sale family. That's correct. What makes sales so special to watch? It, it's fun to watch a left-hander throw the ball from a little bit of a sidearm um, throw, and it's it's fun to wave the K-Zone, K-Signs. And I know you guys have been waving your K-Signs really hard tonight. I've been watching you. Jason, Steve, will send it back up to you guys at the top of the K-Zone. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you to Joe and his family. And uh, that, was, that was all too kind of Joe. No, I thought it was terrific, and the fact that we could have your younger brother on the broadcast was terrific. <laughs> you know, the thing about the puns is all too encouraging. True. And probably means a road trip coming up is good for you. <laughs> Anderson is on, and this is how you'd want it to set up if you're the Sox, yep. right? You've got Anderson on, tie game, and you have choices with Eaton. Well, he's been on twice. He's scored twice. And one of the things we have not seen, and I'm not advocating it on the first pitch, but one of the things we haven't seen is a hit and run. So Brad Osmus, after sending McCann out there to talk to Pelfrey, and I'm sure get the bullpen up and going, has made the call. So Pelfrey is out. Hardy is in. We'll step out and be back after these messages. At 110 as your White Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Also, the first 5,000 girls ages 12 and under receive a doll sized White Sox t shirt presented by American Girl. For tickets, call 866 Sox Game or visit WhiteSox.com. New pitcher for the Tigers, Tony. A Hyundai call to the pen, and Brad Osmus is calling on a left hander. Lane Hardy on for the 11th time. Recently, Activated ERA 164. And he inherits the go ahead run at first base. And the lefty lefty matchup with Adam Eaton. And he's on the hunt for an out with Anderson, or at least to check him back. So, what do you do with Eaton here with his ability to handle the bat? Well, you have your choices. I would think that. Adam is thinking about laying one down. I'm not sure necessarily if Robin is doing that. As he keep Anderson close. Okay. 
Adam Eaton 0 for 4 career against the left hander out of Edmonds Washington Blaine Hardy. Swinging away Eaton left center field long run Maven can't get there and that high bounce saves the Tigers a run. Second and third nobody out. One and two in the batting order on base six times. And Adam Eaton just out of the reach of Cameron Mabin puts a charge into it. It's a low fastball. This one is down but out over the plate. And Mabin tracking it all the way but comes up just a touch short. So Anderson wisely good base running here. He scores easily but that one one hops out of the park and Adam Eaton. Knowing he's not going to get the run batted in, he's already had one, his 22nd earlier in the game, and that's his 10th double. Plum opportunity for Abreu will not come up. The Tigers, to bypass Abreu, put an extra runner on, have the bases loaded, and the double play in order for Melky Cabrera. Bernasmus has a choice. You stay with Hardy and face Melky right handed. Or you are the right hander in the pen and face him left handed. Melky's been hitting it pretty well lately from both sides. He's been a better right hand hitter, however, than a left hand hitter with most of his power coming from the left side. There's your answer. Not necessarily because usually when he runs out there he wants to talk about the defense as opposed to making the change. If you were to take the long slow walk you would think then he would probably go to the right hander but not so in this situation. So he's going to let Hardy stay in. See if he can extricate himself from a very difficult situation. By the way, if I win the Mega Millions in that drawing, I'm going to be right back here with you on the next home stand. I will be looking like the empty chair. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Base is loaded. Melky Cabrera outside ball one. Melky actually has been a better hitter this year after strike one, which is very odd. It's completely the opposite of what you would expect. Been a pretty good hitter from both sides. Very tough to strike out from both sides. A man you'd probably want to see with bases loaded, nobody out. And now, in a different situation, Matt Albers has taken a seat. It looks like Nate Jones is throwing in the pen. And the reason why I could tell that is that we can almost see the pores of Nate Jones from this seat. We have a great view of the Sox bullpen. Anderson, Eaton, Abreu, the runners. Melky, one of the toughest guys to strike out in Major League Baseball, goes down here. He sets him up for a very good curveball. And this one dives out of the zone, and that's going to be it for Hardy. He got the one man he wanted. And so Hardy will depart as Osmus walks out slowly. We'll step out and be back after these messages.
the outfield of U.S. Cellular Field. Meet 2016 White Sox team members and talk to White Sox alumni. Now is your chance. Join us Saturday, June 25th for Picnic in the Park. All proceeds benefit White Sox charities. To purchase tickets, visit White Sox charities. Dot org new pitcher for the Tigers again Steve the man we saw in the opener of the series the man who lost the game in the 12th inning is Anibal Sanchez a converted starter moved into the bullpen because of well that 621 ERA would be a start on for the 15th time He's given up 14 home runs in 62 and a third that is a whopping total that's one of the reasons why he was originally moved into the pen but he's got a good straight change. And he inherits the bases loaded, only one out, and a man desperately seeking a base hit. At the very least, a fly ball. All three of Todd Frazier's career grand slams have come in tie ball games. Here's a good news, bad news situation for Todd. Good news is he's one of the top fly ball hitters in baseball at 48%. Bad news is a bunch of those have been infield fly balls, which you wouldn't like to have here. How about two and zero? Oh? Well, it looks to me, all things considered, like he's in the catbird seat. An enviable spot for Frazier. Two and zero. Oh. Base is loaded, one out, 3-3 three, three tie. He hits it hard, right field, and it'll get a run home. Martinez scoots over, Anderson scores. Frazier gives the Sox the lead at 4-3. Not necessarily the pitch you would go after looking for a fly ball. But it was effective as he reaches out, takes this ball low and away. And drives it to right center. So Todd thinking about a fly ball, this at bat. The thing he did know is you've got to make contact and you can't hit a ground ball. So Tim Anderson, who's been on base three times, has now scored three runs, playing the leadoff hitter to perfection. Two singles and a triple, those three times on base for the rookie Anderson, who gets an attaboy from Frazier. Navarro high to right playable for Martinez and the Sox get a run in the seventh Anderson scores Frazier puts it there Sox need six outs. And replay has been quite a night for Tim Anderson. This time he slices it down the line and look at this hop well away from JD Martinez and then Tim is off to the races. So 
That triple coming in the fifth inning led to a run, as did the single in the first and the single in the seventh, Tim Anderson. Our Xfinity high speed action replay, and what a night as Nate Jones comes into this one. Nate on for the 29th time. He's 2 and 1, his ERA 289. So with that run, Chris Sale can win his 11th. That one charged to Mike Kelfrey. He can lose the ball game, but first things first, six outs to go. And Jones to try to get the ball to Robbie for the save. Nate Jones has to do some of the heavy lifting here. Maven is first, then Cabrera and Castellanos. And although the closer comes on for the save, sometimes the setup man will face the tougher inning. First out, pretty simple. We got to get you an answer for Sticks and Stones, oh, sponsored been, by Ice Cream Soup. Been waiting for bated breath for this. I figured left hander, 333. He hit a double, he hit a triple, he drove in four. Yuck. I thought I'd seen the last of him, but no, he resurrects himself once again. And we still have plenty of Tigers left down the road. We see them quite a bit. Yeah, there's a lot of Tigers. Yeah, this is this is dreadful. That is a rather combustible ERA you had against Los Tigres. Yeah, nice job, Lou. A nice man. He is a very nice man. Chris so is Sale. Alan Trammell, by the way. Yeah. Very nice man. Sale, by the way, seven innings, three runs, a walk, and seven strikeouts here in the K zone tonight. And Nate Jones challenges Cabrera at 99. Pretty good numbers for Nate Jones against one of the league's best, Miguel Cabrera. A little bit high, one ball, two strikes. to right center field. Adam Eaton, two away in the eighth. Sox fans, don't let aches and pains keep you from doing the things you love to do. Schedule an appointment at any of our 340 facilities by visiting athletico.com slash appointments. Athletico, the official physical therapy provider of the Chicago White Sox. Athletico, better for everybody. Well, Cabrera's out, and we may not have to see him for a long while. The fans enjoy a liquid beverage. That's like a rain event. That's one of those that George Carlin would not appreciate, the old liquid beverage. He was a funny man. Mm. Before my time, but a funny man. Well, below your time, approximately. Well, let's see. I would say it was at my zenith, probably in the 80s. I still had hair. That was good. Well, you still, there's hair still yeah, today. It's, it's not great, though. It, it, it's kind hair. One and two on Castellanos. It's the kind you find in a wig shop. In the back room. Ooh, I know. And it's going. But for the time being, it's here. It's wind blown tonight. We are out in the K zone, section 154. It's actually been very pleasant tonight out here. We've had a good time with the fans. It's been a nice night. Slider for strike three. Nate Jones dispatches Castellanos. Sox looking for some padding. They lead four to three, bottom eight.
it's beautiful out here and the best part about it is that the Sox leading four to three late with a chance for an add on run and it's going to have to come against Buck Farmer who's on for the ninth time is ERA of fine 219 just back from the minor leagues opponents hitting 186 that's a, that's a good number. It's been a very short stint in the majors this year eight games worth but this has been Buck Farmer's best year in Major League Baseball by far 1157 the ERA two years ago and a couple starts couple relief appearances 14 games last year is 736 and he goes upstairs for a swing from Lori nothing in two. Buck Farmer up from. Tony Paco's neighborhood in Toledo. Castellanos gives way. Iglesias has the ball. Our ceremonial first pitch tonight was from Chris Kowalas and the Kowalas family of dealerships, one of our sponsors in the White Sox pregame show here on CSN. Pretty good form, actually. I like the delivery. I think that if he keeps it in the air, long enough he probably could turn into a wonderful car salesman one down for Garcia are you are you in the business of telling people what they should do vocationally now are you a guidance counselor after seeing that motion yes <laughs> He's telling people what they shouldn't do yes there are as they say there are courses for horses his course well maybe he's got to work on it a bit thought it was a mighty fine first pitch as first pitches go pulling a strike on Garcia hey the Sox tonight have four runs. And all four of those runs have come across on a productive out as Robertson gets loose. Sack fly in the first, RBI ground out the fourth, RBI ground out the fifth, sack fly in the seventh. Strike two on Garcia. You know who is here tonight? Who's that? Man who is about ready to hang them up, but for a pregame show in Boston, Rich King. Long and distinguished career, WGN, great guy. And it was nice to see him, and we certainly wish him well. We're losing a bunch of luminaries yeah, in the Chicago are. media. Ron yeah. Majors was here last month. Yep, guys who have been around forever. And the great part about this city is the longer you're around, the better they like you. Where does that leave me in year one? Garcia's on with one out. Scrambling for year two. <laughs> I love when Ron Majors was here. I loved what he said about his tie collection. He's got ties after ties after ties in, in the collection. And he said, look, I just kept them by style. I kept them in boxes by style because I knew they'd be in again. So then when something went out of style, I put that box away and then pulled out the old box that was in style before. Very functional. And I take the same approach. I have ties from the 50s that I'm still waiting for them to come back. That was the view, by the way, from where the Bertucci boys have a domain. Chuck a drive right center field. This is ticketed for the alleyway on one hop. Garcia comes it to third. Here he comes. J.B. Shuck and RBI triple. Five three. A huge late add on run after the walk to Avi. And to me, the walk set up the inning. I mean, that's just me. But the triple by J.B. Shuck, his third driven in. And he hits the daylights out of this. And the fortunate part is it did stay in the park. Hits the bottom of the wall. Stays right there. And Avi able to score a huge insurance run last triple last year, September 3rd. More insurance on the line with Anderson taking a breaking ball strike. What a night for Tim Anderson. Two singles and a triple, three runs scored from the top of the card. 
despite the obvious contributions of Bobby Garcia I'm going to concede the pick to click to the crew tonight they picked Tim Anderson very strong pick as it turned out an upstanding fine feller you are well I mean look at least I can do you have to give credit where credit is due and that could be the last time they win for quite some time so they hit it right on the nose with Tim Anderson Poor crew. They work so hard for us, and then you besmirch them. No, I'm giving them a congratulations. Anderson has it taken away on a low line shot, two down. Bidding for his fourth hit, only to see Ian Kinsler through a drawn in infield, able to make the stab. Over the glove of Farmer, and Kinsler right there. Boy, Tim continues to hit the ball hard. He's got. We talked about exit velocity. He's got a very lively bat, and we've seen it tonight. We continue to see it, and he scored three runs. That's all you can ask of a leadoff hitter. Get on and find a way to score. Talked briefly about Anderson with Robin Ventura before the game around the batting cage, and he said, look, the one thing, as Cabrera sucks it up, the one thing is he went through a couple offers, and he didn't show the wear and tear. Sox lead 5-3 after 8 tonight. Three outs to go. early in the game it's Miller time brought to you by Miller light and Miller moments encompass the night of Tim Anderson he scores the first run that's good then he triples into the corner as this one kicks away from J.D. Martinez on his way to third first major league triple then he scores another one and then base hits back up the middle and then he scores yet another one. Two runs scored, three hits, a big night for Tim Anderson. And David Robertson comes in to nail it down. 15 for 17. Looking for number 16 and looking for win number 11 for Chris Sale. And a base hit starts it off. J.D. Martinez with his first hit tonight. Time now for our White Sox upcoming schedule brought to you by Travel Wisconsin. Plan your fun today at TravelWisconsin.com. So after this final game of the homestand, it's on to Cleveland for three, and then the Bostons for four. A big seven-game road trip on our Travel Wisconsin upcoming schedule, and David Robertson in a bit of a jam here in the ninth and an insurance run makes you a little more comfortable. It takes away the possibility of moving a runner over and then getting him in. You need the two. Upton looks at ball one. Where do you pitch Upton here? 
Well, you're looking for a double play off his bat and low and away is always a good spot for that. But when you go in go in off the plate. Close to down the middle one ball one strike. A little good late movement on it. When David is right that fastball looks like a cutter. As the wind has started to kick up a little later in the game. That's the placement you were talking about. Yeah, that one shaves off the inside corner. Upton gave up on it, and it's a good strike. So you see where Deanna wants it, and David with that little cutter action, that one shaved off the corner. One and two for Upton. Martinez at first. And it gets strike three. More late movement. One down in the ninth. And I think it needs to be said that Chris Sale who sailed through the first two innings had a really tough third inning gave up five hits in that third inning with three runs. And then a very good offensive team are these Tigers and Chris Sale held them down to one hit after the third. A terrific performance. Where the Sox looking to pick up some ground now Victor Martinez who has been. Lurking on the bench. He can't run very well. He obviously can swing the bat is going to come on to pinch hit from a can. And Victor representing the tying run. Victor hitting 333 overall. It's a name that Robin didn't want to have to write in his card. But thanks to Brad Osmus, here he is. One of the top hitters in Major League Baseball who entered the series. As the fifth best hitter in average in MLB. With his legs the way they are, and just taking a quarter zone shot in his knee, it's almost inconceivable that on any ground ball you don't turn to. Away, ball one. Victor hitting 342 from the left side. He's had a chance to pinch hit three times. He's two for three. Seen a lot of that this homestand, but the Fury has come back two nights ago. Strike on a breaking ball, just kicked the corner. Which, by the way, those two hits both left the ballpark. A thoughtful crowd. A tired K zone. One and one. Another strike called. Not a peep from Victor Martinez, but he would have had a gripe. He's not taking one out there again. Too close to take. You go back there. Third curve ball. I'd like to go in on his hands with a fastball. Breaking ball in the dirt bounces away and Martinez up to second base. On the wild pitch. Runner at second for the Tigers. Chance to win the series for the Sox. They would finish this six game stretch at home against the Central. Hello. At three and three. Two and two. On the ground. Robertson has out number two. That's that fastball I was thinking about inside because I didn't think he'd get his hands out. And unfortunately, the wild pitch stopped the double play. So one out to go. K zone to its feet. 
Avilas is one for three. Former Division II Player of the Year, Mike Avilas, the 35 year old for the Tigers. Against the ex Alabama right hander, Robertson. Foul ball, strike one. Tigers got all their runs tonight in the third. Avila scored the first one. Outside low. Miggy and the Tigers got a win last night. This the rubber match. 1 1. Off the plate. Run to first. Tim had a shot at it. This doesn't hit off the mound. It's going into center field. It's going to be E6. That's a tough error to make. That ball was in the extreme outside webbing of the glove. They may change that one, but for the time being, runners at the corners. For Iglesias, who homered, and now it is changed to a single. That was quick work. First and third, two down. Uh, Avilas isn't much of a base stealer anymore. No, you got to keep him close, and Iglesias has been swinging it pretty well in this series. Four for ten. Heat strike one. Robertson to Iglesias. Nothing and two. Robertson try to cinch up number 11 for Chris Sale. Two strikes on Iglesias. On the ground. Lori. Sucks with Chris Sale's the first to 11. 5 3, your final score. After a rocky third, Chris Sale just settled down, gave the one hit after that. Nate Jones with a brilliant eighth, and David Robertson with a nail biting but successful ninth inning to chalk up save number 16. A game very reminiscent of how the Sox were winning in April. Took the lead, close game, bullpen closed it down. The man you're looking at right there has provided a spark to this team. We don't know how it's going to play out. We do know that. The top of the order is much more formidable these days. Combined between Anderson and Eaton, they were on base six times. With Anderson scoring three of those times, Adam Eaton driving in a run, he got two hits and was hit by a pitch. So a series win for the Sox against a division foe. And Chris Sale is able to nail down number 11.
And we'll take a look at Chris Sale tonight. That slider was a whole lot better than it's been. For the most part, he had very good location. Seven strikeouts in seven innings. The three runs we talked about in the third. One other hit. So six hits given up. The K zone was very active tonight. He only walked one and he hit one. And there you look at it. Final line for sale. He gets to number 11 in the win column. Seven innings, six hits, three earned runs. Just the one walk that was intentional and seven strikeouts. So Sox win and R. Sierra Santos is downstairs with Tim Anderson. Tim, three hits, three runs scored. Last time I talked to you, you were getting your first Gatorade bath of your major league career. Mm -hmm. Tonight you get your first triple of your major league career. What has this whirlwind week been like? Uh, it's been awesome uh, to come out here and just compete with these guys and, and just have a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it and just have fun and just put together a good game. Rick Hahn and Robin Ventura said they didn't want you to come in and be a savior. They just wanted you to come in and play your game. So far, you and Eaton at the top of the order. How has that been clicking? Uh, it's been awesome, uh, especially to lead the in and off and with a good hit, and he just follow up with it, and it's been awesome, so I'm enjoying it. You guys get your first home series win in over a month. How good does it feel to be a part of this? Uh, it feels great. Uh, it's a dream come true. I'm, I'm having a blast, and, and it's, it's just awesome. Just to be here is awesome. Well, he stayed dry today, guys. Jason, Steve, I'll send it back up to you in the K-Zone. Well, thank you, Sierra. As you look at this view, and as you look at what the Sox yeah. did here in this game, and the end of this homestand, you go on the road, you're back to 500. What does this win mean to the Sox? Well, I love the fact that they were able to defeat a very potent offensive club in Detroit. They sent Chris Sale to the mound. When you send Chris Sale to the mound, you just expect to win that game. And that's exactly what happened tonight, not without some heroics. But Chris, who had the rocky third, then came back. I think it's a great team effort tonight, and you have to love the top. The top of the order looks completely different than it's looked in years. And Tim Anderson, a big part of it, along with Adam Eaton, who seems to be a natural number two hitter. You know who's a big part of it, too? Our fan base back here. How about these folks? There they are. <laughs> a lovely bunch, aren't they? This was a pleasure. It was. And Enjoyed it. You know, let's do it again like in 